Listen, the shame and indignation, the shame. I haven't been here for two years. I'm embarrassed. I was actually, I've been in the U.S. the last two years for an internal conference. And I was supposed to be in sub-zero temperatures in Dallas right now. Then something happened. You know what happened? I heard Matt Gebby was here. That's right. I heard Matt Gebby was here and David Keene. So I was like, no way I'm going to the U.S. I'm going to Thailand. I'm going to Bangkok. So I'm super excited. And right now is the best time to take stock and look at what we're learning about. The f- biggest question we had in 23 that I keep getting already in 24 is, of course, what is the question? It's all about the Chinese. Where are they? We got to start at the Chinese. Where are they? You know where they are. They are there and they are enjoying it. They are touristing around their country and they're having an awesome time. They spent four years developing, creating a tourist environment that is better than ever. It's cashless, it's clean, it's efficient. They got new experiences, way to get around. It's an awesome country to travel if you're Chinese. So why aren't they coming? Well, listen, the good thing is we know one of the main barriers. If you're missing 50% of the flights from China to Thailand, it doesn't help. Not everyone's going to drive or take the train down here. So you're missing the flights. This is, and if you read the news, going like, oh, there's a lot of interest. People are searching. OTA is going to tell you it's looking really good. Inherently, Chinese are pretty last minute, if you didn't know. They like to create an event like this. It takes Bill uh, a lot of gray hairs and, and three years to do one event. They do it in like two hours. Chinese are very last minute when they book their travels domestically and internationally as well. So it's hard to predict the future. We can look at the flight schedules, of course, and we're missing a bit. But we can already see now that for the first normal Lunar New Year, the Great Migration is happening this year, the first time in five years. Some of them are already thinking, you know what, why don't we go abroad? Pass uh, for visas and passports, that queue is shorter. And then also when you look forward to the big May holidays, We're starting to see signals, but you won't really know what's booked until a little bit later. And they might book a hotel, and then on that trip, change it, and then go to someplace else. It's a little bit precarious, so we can't really forecast that well. But we know they're coming, but it won't be super linear. It's going to be a little bit more logarithmic, and it's going to come over the course of time, second half of the year, next peak season. But you have other source markets, of course. The Russians are absolutely here, and they like to come here. Thailand is a accessible country in so many ways. Russians can't really go freely everywhere. Russian airspace is only really done by Russians and Chinese right now. So Russians are keep coming and they're growing and they're also being supported by the government pumping more money and making sure that the airlift actually works. So say what you will, but the Russians have been growing and that's a market that have been coming to Thailand before this as well, which leads us to the third big one, India, right? India is a market with fantastic fundamentals that you're aware of. They're so big that they can have a very functioning and successful domestic business, just like China, tourism, and also go to Thailand and everywhere else. But they didn't historically go as much to Thailand as everyone else. So that's an emerging market for Thailand that keeps growing, and we'll see more of it. I'm a little bit disappointed maybe in the speed of that, but how do we get to the 40 million? How do we get back to that 40 million? Close to 30 last year was really impressive and how quickly that came back. It really, really was. And there was a lot of people that made that happen. And what people are coming, and if you look at the share of last year of some of these key markets. So I look at the Russians, so from three, and that's the share of the overall arrivals. Three, five percent, you can see the Russians come back and they're growing. A little bit disappointed in the Indians because I thought we'd have more. And if you know that actor, uh, well done you. It looks so sad. Because he, we, he, we are also sad. We wish that number was 8 9%, but we're not seeing that airlift back in, even though India is now, uh, for long-haul travel, become a really hub and spoke uh, for a lot of the international travel. And listen, the Chinese are kind of halfway, but they're coming. They will come back. It's going to be the group travel will come, just not as quick as you want. Right? No one expected that it would, no one expects the Spanish Inquisition. No one expects it to come that quickly, but it will come. It takes time. But Malaysia, bole. That makes sense, right? Because the regional travel was the first to come and you take share from that so overall. So why is it easy to be optimistic? If we're doing okay, kind of, which I'll show you, and we still have that coming, that's pretty good. So when it comes to the occupancies and how that impacts on hotel performance, Southeast Asia last year, 90%. You want to get up to the red line, that's 2019 numbers. So that's 9% off. We're missing long haul. November, 94 Moving in the right direction. 
and everyone who takes a picture, I'm guessing you're not doing it of my lovely t-shirt, it's the slides. The PDF is available from the organizer. You get all the data there. Isn't that pretty good? So one thing that was going to be the last thing to arrive was my group and corporate travel. So ignore the shit in the middle and let's just look at that. Group travel is almost back to where it should be. And I mean consistently back. So we're two, three percentage points away from group travel being there without those other countries that are missing. So group travel, that's good news. And we always said that would be last and it is coming. So that's, that's a good story. And if we walk around the country and have a look, there are a couple of markets that are not yet performing for kind of obvious reasons. Comparing to 2019, a market like Chiang Mai, they're not 5, 10% behind, they're 14% behind. And they're not getting the phenomenal rate growth. They're still missing a lot of those travelers because how they were set up before the pandemic and since. You got Samoy and Krabi, obviously, that makes sense, kind of not much to say there. And you look at the big markets, particularly Phuket and Bangkok, Phuket stands out, that minus three is very close to being flat. So that's almost like a Western market and 30% higher rates than 2019. 30%. These rates are nominal, so they're not inflation adjusted, but that matters less these days as inflation uh, is a little bit more stable. And if we just switch over and look at Bangkok, the one surprise there is maybe a little bit disappointed that this particular area of Bangkok didn't have the same rate growth as nearby in Pataman and Bipavadi, where it grew more on Phuket levels. So what about the next quarter or next five months? What do we have? When you look at the business on the books, for this next five months, this is pretty good. These are high numbers in occupancy on the books in hotels in these four areas. What's the difference from last year at the same time? Well, first of all, Bangkok and Phuket are very similar. If I drew the same lines last year, they would look very similar. That makes sense. The market kind of had recovered. The big difference is in other markets. Pattaya, 10% higher, 10 percentage points higher, and regional South uh, Thailand with the resort markets about 15% higher. So this is good. It's moving in the right direction in so many ways. But you're not special. Well, you are, but not in that way. Because this story is very similar across Southeast Asia, where you have 5 10% occupancies almost there 2019 and rates at about 20%. What happened here was luxury had grown. They had that share very quickly. And then it was about economy mid-scale also getting their rates back and that's a sign of broad kind of maturity or coming back so the hopefully the last year of recovery was that so that means that last year was a bit of an average average that average is pretty average uh, in terms of rev part so that's top line let's, let's talk a little bit more about bottom line what happened on the total revenue side was there was also a, a normalization normalization how independent hotels that were missing some of those profit margins caught up. This is a snapshot of November compared, November 23 compared to November the year prior, and they're back up there growing. Doesn't mean that luxury is doing worse. Luxury came before that. So in 23, their growth have kind of subsided a bit. So that's good on revenue. What about costs? One of the biggest risks we talk about for hotels and their owners was labor cost. How hard is it to find staff and have these amazing students that we see today? It's not easy. They're great, everyone will be happy to have them, but we see labor costs growing last year faster than cost and then revenue. Cost grows faster than revenue, not a good equation. But if you look at later on in the year, that had flipped. So it's more about in the middle of the year that something started to happen where revenues and that ADR cut in, the productivity hotels helped and you have a better uh, balance there. But listen, there's no guarantee, so for me, the biggest thing to watch is still cost control for this year from an owner perspective. So what about new supply? We're going to get a lot of new hotels, about 10,000 keys across Thailand. The biggest scale where that's happening, about a third, is an upper mid-scale. Upper mid-scale is a global trend. Everybody wants about 150 to 200 hotel rooms, less F&B, uh, a lot of these popular brands that are coming up. Luxury is still popular, as so you can see, about a quarter. So a lot of rooms. Will this put pressure on your hotel? It depends on where you are. It depends on if you have a lot of upper mid-scale around you that is coming as well. So there is definitely a risk around that. So to summarize a few points, the airflow of these key source markets will take time. And the Indians is kind of a new client that is coming into Thailand. But you have to remember, they want to come. 
And it is only more beneficial for Thailand when it's more diverse and not relying on one source market. Occupancy, as you're aware of, we're kind of there. We forecast that Bangkok, for instance, is going to end up there about 4% behind 2019 levels this year. It's going to take longer. But as long as the rates are there 18 20% higher, then you're okay. So I'm a little bit worried about just that cost balance, I think, generally. So the expectation otherwise this year, to me, I think there'll be more transactions this year. Happy days for the brokers, I think, more. And also maybe the risk of flags changing hands in terms of franchise. Listen, you get the PDF. You can scan there and get it as well. Awesome to be here. Thanks for coming to TTF. Ciao.